Uh, the finance minister, Lo Ji Wei, who was in office for three years, was just unexpectedly replaced. And as is the case in China, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of clarity as to uh, why the government minister, uh, why government ministers generally come and go. And so because of that, it's just left a lot of speculation, and people are just wondering what it all means. There are some observers and analysts who are concerned that this could mean that the government is backtracking on economic reforms because Lo Ji Wei uh, was known here as a man who is, was quite outspoken and reform-minded and uh, someone who had been credited with uh, uh, pushing pretty hard for fiscal reforms. Um, there's also quite a bit of speculation that this could just be a part of uh, President Xi Jinping's effort to have a tighter grip on the party as well as the government. And that's because uh, not a lot is known about the new finance minister, Xiao Jie, except for the fact that uh, people believe that he is closer to the president president as well as the premier. Now, uh, the uh, new finance minister is also a part of a, a whole a reshuffle of, of other government ministers. In fact, the state security minister is also new. And what's interesting there is that uh, he would, had played a very key role in the anti-corruption campaign for President Xi Jinping. And he's also believed to have a background in cybersecurity. And the timing was interesting because China today uh, finally passed a a very controversial cybersecurity law, a one in which uh, many international companies as well as NGOs have been concerned about. Uh, their main concern is about the increase of restrictions on the internet and also the, the lack of access for foreign tech companies to this market. Now, separately in Hong Kong, we saw an interesting development there, and that is that the Beijing government had decided to bar officially two uh, pro-democracy Hong Kong lawmakers from taking oath, even though they were Elected to the local government, and that's just being seen as a sign of the of President Xi Jinping's greater dis, uh, clampdown on dissent here in China, as well as outside of the borders in Hong Kong as well. Eunice, obviously, there's uh, power struggles taking place uh, over here in the United States as well. Is there a lot of focus in Beijing on the outcome of the U.S. election? There's absolutely a lot of focus uh, in Beijing. Um, it, there, there have been a couple of polls over the weekend. Uh, some people were saying that uh, in mainland China that uh, about 40 percent of the people were supportive of Trump. There's a lot of speculation about that because some people were, were uh, basically thought that maybe in the mainland people didn't really necessarily know who he was compared to uh, many people who were polled in this, in this survey um, outside of China in other parts of Asia. So there's been a lot of discussion about him. And in fact, one thing that's interesting about the, the outgoing finance minister, just to show how outspoken he actually was, he was one of the very few ministers who uh, actually called Trump an irrational type and uh, weighed in on the discussion of these candidates, which was very, very unusual in China. Most of the ministers here uh, choose not to get involved in other countries' domestic affairs because they do not want other countries getting involved in China's affairs. Hey CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the eye right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.